Who is the hardest hitting boxer of all time? Is it Mike Tyson, George Foreman, Jack Johnson, or newcomer Deontay Wilder? What about that one Virgin Islander who seems to slip from everyone's list, Julian Jackson? I give to boxing the greatest fights. Ever further behind them. Oh no! Let's check out this hard hitting underdog, but before we do, hit that subscribe button. Thanks. There's an old saying, punchers are born, not made. This is a truth that has been argued for decades. How do athletes get power? Is it conditioned, honed in, or is it simply a gift? Most say it's a combination of all three, but all those who face Julian Jackson agree that he is undoubtedly the hardest hitter to ever put them on the canvas. And I've given them 100%. Oh, there's a right hand. I've given them all that I have. I've given to boxing. But why is it that Jackson is left off of everyone's list? Could it be because he lacks a super fight? Or is it because he competed during the Leonard and Tyson eras? Lucky for the Hawk, Julian Jackson, legends never die. And now more than ever, his name is being mentioned when the topic of boxing's hardest puncher reaches the table. After 17 years as a professional, Jackson's highlight reel is dense, powerful, and widely unseen. He's as tough as they come, ranked by many as one of the hardest punchers in boxing history. Even Ring Magazine has Jackson listed as one of boxing's 100 greatest punchers of all time. Jackson discovered his power in the amateurs, knowing early on that he could deliver some serious power. But in conclusion of his amateur career, Jackson received some advice that would set him up to be champion. Jackson's longtime coach told him he didn't have to try and hit hard, because all he needed was for his natural ability to kick in. And once Jackson embodied these words, he became a devastating force in the boxing world. With all that power, Jackson didn't really move like a middleweight, welterweight, or even a heavyweight for that matter. His style is strong, powerful, yet slick and fast. He's able to attack the body and head in combos that just seem too powerful for his size. When Jackson hits guys, he really hits guys. And most of the time, those guys aren't getting up. Jackson is the type to have enough power where you genuinely fear for his opponent's safety before and after the fight. Of Jackson's knockouts, half were TKO and the rest he knocked his opponents completely out cold, often for minutes at a time. Born and raised in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Julian Jackson competed as a professional boxer from 1981 to 1998 and was a three-time world champion at welterweight and middleweight with an 89% knockout ratio. Not bad for a guy who competed in 61 fights. Jackson was no stranger to adversity. After turning pro in 1981, Jackson began his career in Puerto Rico, where he pounded his way through opponents for five years before losing in his first title shot against the WBA super welterweight champion Mike McCallum in 1986. But Jackson always bounced back, in his career and between the ropes. He regained his winning streak, knocking out fighters from all over the world, and viciously took out opponents from the UK, America, Jamaica, Korea, Ecuador, Belize, and Brazil. To snatch the vacant WBA title, Jackson bested Korea's Baek and Chul in three rounds, landing a devastating right to knock Baek senseless before continuing with a combo and finishing him with a left hook. Baek lost his feet first, and after, his head fell through the ropes. Jackson then went on to defend his belt against Reggie Barnes, Efren Olivo, Buster Drayton, Francisco de Jesus, and future champion Terry Norris. In his bout against Terry Norris, Jackson gets tagged multiple times, with Norris outlanding Jackson's punches at a ratio that seems 10 to 1. But once he saw red, Jackson used his tunnel vision to target some devastating hooks, backing Norris against the ropes and eventually landing a vicious right hand like no other. Norris was gone before he hit the deck, and Jackson once again proved that his punching power was a scary truth. Norris wasn't the only one who fell hard under the punches of Jackson. Buster Drayton was also dropped hard by Jackson after coming out too aggressive. These two exchanged bombs for a few rounds before Jackson's body shots began to take their toll. From there, Drayton took some serious punishment and fell like a tree from Jackson's exhaustion of punches. It didn't end pretty for Wayne Powell either. After Jackson landed a right hand, Powell hit the canvas hard. The referee removed Powell's mouthpiece and called off the fight before finishing his count. Take Dennis Milton. Jackson feigned a jab, then simultaneously slipped and threw a left that rocked Milton. Milton caught himself on the ropes, but once Jackson landed, it was all over. 
a right hook and in Milton's night shortly thereafter. How Milton's arm held up and the loss in motor function, that's a result of Jackson's power. And to speak of absolute mismatches, we don't see these kinds of knockouts often. And down goes Milton! Jackson, then known as the Hawk, claimed that there were a lot of chickens running from him in the welterweight division. I don't know if I would call them chickens, but after seeing Jackson's power, who can blame them for not wanting any part of it? With Jackson, it was more than just power. He could also move, stun, and juke. His toolbox was full of tricks that made him all the more dangerous, but his most special ability by far was his ability to punch, and did he punch with power. So after tearing his way through the welterweight division, Jackson moved up to middleweight to face Harold Bomber Graham for the vacant WBC title belt. Prior to this fight, Jackson had some eye damage which required him to get surgery, after which the British boxing board would not allow him to fight in the UK, so Jackson took the fight to Spain where he delivered one of the most famous performances of all time. Graham was a mover who slipped and danced, and he showed it in his fight against Jackson on November 24, 1990. Graham was quick to the punch and made a point to target Jackson's vulnerable eye. It looked like Graham had the fight, but after three rounds, Jackson saw red once again, turned into the hawk, and threw a shattering right hand that knocked Graham unconscious for five whole minutes. It was the first time Graham was stopped in his whole career. From there, Jackson's streak only continued, with him scoring a KO against an array of opponents, including his win against Ishmael Negron in less than a round. But this time, it was Jackson's left hook that put the Puerto Rican Negron on the canvas. Jackson also took down Ron Collins in five, but Thomas Tate proved to be one of Jackson's toughest matches. This was the first time that Jackson went to the scorecards, but he did manage to win by unanimous decision and delivered a knockdown in the process. Great, he should have gone down, but he's there. At this point in his career, there was talk that Jackson was the world's hardest pound-for-pound -pound puncher in boxing. After losing to Gerald McClellan, Jackson bounced back again to show the world his signature knockout power against undefeated European champion Agostino Cardamone in 1995. Cardamone walked through Jackson in the first round, but Jackson slowed the fight down and brought Cardamone to his pace. And once again, it was Jackson's right hand that ended the fight. Il le cherche, Jack. Oh là! Il est arrivé. Il est arrivé cette fois à la pointe du menton. There were many that followed, and the way Jackson knocked out his opponents was always devastating. Whether it was his right or left, a shot to the body or a hook to the face, the secret is out, and Jackson's power speaks for itself.